welcome to Martial Arts Mania. I'm your host, Debbie Goodman. When I started studying martial arts in the late 1980s, I picked up magazines, books, and watched lots of movies to learn as much as I could. And the one name that kept popping up over and over again, Master James Liu. I am privileged to be in his home today and get this very exclusive interview. Thank you, Master Liu. It's a pleasure to just be in your presence. Well, it's my pleasure. Welcome to my humble home. Oh, it's more than humble. This this place is just marvelous. It, to me, it represents Southern California. It's beautiful. So uh, tell me, how did you get your start in martial arts? How old were you? I started when I was uh, a little kid with, uh, with my next door neighbor and buddy, Curtis Wong, who started Kung Fu magazines, and uh, I was in junior high, and we were just thinking of things to do, and he said, uh, oh, there's a karate school down at, you know, a few miles away, and was, then we just said, yeah, let's take karate, mm -hmm. and for no better reason than that, and uh, uh, that was a form of uh, Teng Sudo, mm -hmm. Korean style, so we went there, and started training and uh, that was my first taste and from that point on I was just thirsty for more not just that style but I just wanted to learn everything uh, so after a couple of years of that I, I went to um, in high school mm -hmm. there was this fellow who was teaching the karate club so it was an after school kind of a club mm -hmm. and really unique style. The, the, the master was a Green Beret combat instructor, mm -hmm. but he also he studied and utilized uh, Chole Fat mm -hmm. in part of the training. So, which is pretty strange, all we did was fight. There was no forms. Uh, we, we go and train and just fight. The entire mm -hmm. class, mm -hmm. and uh, that was very interesting. Very, I guess, more practical techniques because of the combat background that he has. Mm -hmm. um, and then also during that time, I get I get bored really easy. <laughs> <laughs> so I I found this other place uh, that was in Chinatown that was training uh, white eyebrow style buck me pie, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Actually, that became probably one of my favorite styles. It's a, the best way to describe it is a mixture of Wing Chun, but with high kicks. Okay. You know, which is kind of like an opposite of what you would think. When did you start competing in tournaments? Because I understood you pretty much led in your field in the uh, tournament yeah. circuit. Yeah, uh, my, also at the, Doug Wong, Curtis's brother, uh, was my, of course, my neighbor, and we, among the many other things, we used to even practice wrestling because we watch wrestling in the backyard. We would try all these crazy things. Mm -hmm. uh, he was studying with Ar Arkham Wong, mm -hmm. uh, the, the five animal style. So I was also working with Doug and learning more about the you know, Shaolin style. Mm -hmm. And uh, it became a point that during... Uh, Oh, and then it changed. I forgot all about that. Then came the Kung Fu series. Oh, yes. One of my all-time favorite TV uh, shows. That's how I... There was a big cattle call mm -hmm. for, for, for that. And so Curtis and I went, because Doug actually worked on the pilot. Mm -hmm. And he said, yo, you should come down and, you know, Warner Brothers. So, you know, we got in this huge line out in Warner Brothers. And we're just waiting in line. We got in. Uh, somehow... They selected a, a few people for the Shaolin Temple scenes, and uh, both Curtis and I got on. Mm -hmm. And uh, imagine that, being a Kung Fu uh, practitioner, to get to play and go to shoot in the Shaolin Temple in Burbank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, we also put on the skull caps, so we, we got to pretend like we were monks, and we had the greatest time. Uh, so that led to 
us getting, getting some cash in our hands. Mm -hmm. And at that age, you're like, what do I do with this money? So we all, three of us decided, let's open a Kung Fu school. Wow, so that's, that's how great. it all became, uh, yeah, it came alive from that. And from that, we started thinking, well, how can we promote the Kung Fu school? So that's where our tournament uh, mm -hmm. careers came in. It was all for the purpose of getting the name out so we get more students and make more money. Uh, so we had a great time with that, and, and um, uh, our team became pretty much uh, dominant on the tournament, <laughs> tournament scene. Uh, we got blessed with work. We would go in and pretty much sweep the tournaments, you know, first, second, third. So we would take everything mm -hmm. uh, to the point that tournament promoters were saying, you know, oh, please don't come. <laughs> yeah, because everybody doesn't want to compete because you know, they're wasting their money. So that transitioned us into doing demos because mm -hmm. they want us, can you just do demos? And I said, all right, we'll still get our names out there sure. and uh, not piss people off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we started doing that. And then we also really utilize, since it's much more of a freedom, what we're doing is just demos. Uh, we started coming up with more creative forms and, and uh, actually even creative ways of putting entertainment into the martial arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course with music, and, and uh, I think we were just on the very beginning of when musical forms and creative forms were coming into competition. Mm -hmm. so. I used to do open forms a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I pretty much stuck to the, the San Joaquin Valley, mm -hmm. and I didn't travel too far except for San Francisco, but uh, I liked open forms the best, because you mm -hmm. could. You could dress the way you wanted, and you could play music to your set. Um, so when did the ball really get rolling? So obviously doing the Kung Fu TV series mm -hmm. helped open the door to, let's just call it Hollywood, for lack of a better word. Right. Uh, so when did they start calling you back for things? Uh, well, I got into, from that I, I segued into doing just purely stunt work. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, they need somebody to beat up, that would be me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more bad guys than good guys, so uh, I, I got fortunate and was beat up constantly. Mm -hmm. I've seen your movies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the other great thing about that too is uh, I was usually a stunt coordinator mm -hmm. would hire me, and a lot of them didn't know much about the fight stuff or the fight game, mm -hmm. and they would say, to, "Oh, you know, put together a fight. You know, I'm going to go over here and do a meeting on something else." So I get to put together the fight scenes with you know wherever the the stunt guys and uh, it forced me into becoming basically a fight coordinator. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course I put it together. I show the the stunt coordinator. Then he brings a director and he says, "This is what I put together." Oh. <laughs> so I sat there and looked like, "Hmm, just did his job. <laughs> I'm going to be a fight coordinator." So you did the uh, the big scene in Big Trouble in Little China. I I did all the, the choreograph all the fights for, for the, the classic movie Big Trouble That's in Little China. That's one of them. I've seen it probably a hundred times. I just love that movie. Yeah. And then of course you were in uh, Best of the Best. Yep. Where you got beat best up. Best of Best two. <laughs> you got beat up by Eric Roberts. And yeah, yeah. All I can remember is pop it, Tommy, pop it, because Tom, I. I you were my favorite on the Korean team, but my favorite in the show was obviously Tommy Lee because he was from Fresno, California. Um, and Philip is a fantastic technician. He's, and, he's so clean with his techniques. And in the movie, he fights his own his brother, brother. In, brother in real life. And yeah, and that is that goes to another why a lot of people like to use their own team members or. Mm -hmm people they're used to working with because growing up together they've gotten that timing and rhythm and, and mm -hmm. they, they trust each other they know exactly how they move so they can throw stuff at each other and not worry that 
is he gonna duck? Is he gonna duck? Please duck. <laughs> yeah. And so that's a that's a huge thing when you work with somebody you don't know. Right. And you don't and, and then especially on top of that, if you have to work with an actor to do a, a fight scene with an actor, uh, there's many times that they just blank out and forget the move. And you have to be ready to change up, wait for it, and, and see that he's back in the scene or uh, fake something <laughs> without hurting him. Uh, you did a scene with Charlie Sheen in uh, Hot Shots Part 2? Yep. That is probably one of my favorite uh, times on, on a film set. Was he fun to work with? Absolutely, absolutely the best person. Uh, we actually stayed in touch because we had such a good time together. I, I met Charlie Sheen once briefly, and to me, he seemed very nice. Yeah. That's all I can say. He's great. So, Master Lu, what are you doing now? Do you still practice your Kung Fu, or do you do any Tai Chi? I've tried to, I guess, I'm always trying to learn something new. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and especially, I, I found which has been helpful and why I think one of the reasons why I'm able to stay busy uh, is to not limit myself as far as, especially in martial arts, as far as style. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times in films, uh, if the movie calls for this one style and you do not know anything about it, you can't really put together the, the action for it. Um, so I can put it as fake anything. Well, well, the reason I asked if you study Tai Chi is because you seem to have an excellent energy and obviously much younger than your years. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering how you do that. I took, I started Chin Style Tai Chi several years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, really just fell in love with the, the flow and, and mixed in with the explosive movement. I, I, I thought that yin and yang of that. It was, to me, it's just beauty in motion, and uh, and it was not easy moving very slow and That's smooth. Uh, yeah, it was surprisingly the the amount of workout that I got from it, and uh, uh, so I really enjoyed that. But because of my work and mm -hmm. you know not being able to to have regular attendance in the class, right. I kind of let that slide away. Uh, recently, I, I, again, I started taking Qigong classes. Great. Yeah, because I, I want to, I guess, cultivate internal en energy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then I got busy again. I had to go to Puerto Rico for, <laughs> for the Dude, have that to. It sounds darn, so bad. That darn music in the movie <laughs> business, you know how it is. Yeah, so <laughs> that cut that cut that short and then you know I, then I've just been busy here uh, but yeah I would love to continue more of that Chinese medicine it seems to me I've seen some photos of you uh, <clears throat> doing acupuncture I'm getting acupuncture but not giving yeah, okay. I don't like needles I don't either <laughs> <laughs> and that's a funny story uh, Jackie Chan mm -hmm. who's probably like the craziest daredevil mm -hmm. to the, somebody that's got balls <laughs> he is absolutely scared of needles that's funny he would not <laughs> he would run away uh, yeah I, I get it because uh, one time when i had to go to the phlebotomist for a blood draw and she told me she was gonna have to take seven vials i turned to her and i said you're gonna have to sing soft kitty to me <laughs> um so I, we can't really say what our favorite kind is because it's it's kind of hard. I, I too have tried mm -hmm. different styles, and uh, I found the best fit for me was kung fu. Mm -hmm. I also took some tai chi from Julian Chen when he was in Fresno. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. he's moved away, and uh, right now there's a gentleman named Sean Lee who is a taekwondo practitioner and instructor, but he only teaches tai chi one night a week, and I was hoping yeah. to find it for a couple of nights a week. But of course, when I'm down here in the Los Angeles area, I drop in on Carrie Wong's class. Yeah, Carrie, she's great. She is great. In fact, a friend of mine uh, competed against her mm -hmm. at one of Doc Fai Wong's tournaments. And of course, mm -hmm. Carrie walked away with the gold. Yes. But uh, not only is she a great practitioner, she is a wonderful person. 
because to me, it doesn't matter how many movies you've done or how many trophies you've won, it really is the person inside. Mm -hmm. um, we had a dear friend in common, Stuart Kwan. Stuart Kwan and I used to work on a program called Mind, Body, Spirit, where mm -hmm. we, we stressed this to yeah. the kids. That is absolutely someone that I think of if we're talking about someone that has that peace within mm -hmm. and just he just exudes this good energy to anybody that he comes in contact with yeah and, uh, yeah that's such a loss mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a terrible shame uh, it was something that was brought on by a medical condition mm -hmm. but I think of him often mm -hmm. and so he's and still here he is he is I think he's he probably had something to do with us coming together today. Mm -hmm. um, now, another thing about working in the movies, stunts, is, and I tell people this, actors work a lot harder than people realize. Number one, you work long hours, mm -hmm. okay, without a break. It's like you, you put the cell phone away and you may not check it for days, and sometimes you have to put that cell phone away because you're stepping into a prison. Mm -hmm. You uh, did a film a couple of years ago where you had to spend some time in a prison. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The Angola State Prison with the Dillon brother. Mm -hmm. Matt? Matt. Uh, this was, Ang I don't know if you know, Angola is, uh, I think, over 90% are lifers. So wow. serious, serious. Serious people. guys. So, yeah. yeah, you have to, no communications, uh, anything you can't bring in. You get checked with a security check before you enter. Uh, as you're driving into this, it's like a, its own town. It's so big. Okay. But straight out of the scene, when I, the first time we drove in, there's they have workers out on farmland. Mm -hmm. And they have the guard on a horse with a rifle. Wow. It's like Kuhan Luke. <laughs> it's a cool visual, but... Ooh, I said, ooh, this is serious. Yeah, this is serious business. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, 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 I haven't seen the finished product, but um, great cast. Willem, Willem Dafoe, mm -hmm. Tom Berenger, uh, yeah, Matt Dillon, uh, just a great cast to work with. You've worked with a lot of the greats in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone that you haven't yet worked with that you'd like to work with? Oh, yes, absolutely. Who's that? Bruce Lee. Well. <laughs> in the magazine, because I was helping with the magazine uh, Inside Kung Fu for years and years. Mm -hmm. And being there and a martial artist, I was naturally the one to be the dummy in all the, all the photo shoots. So I had the absolute pleasure and honor to touch hands with every legendary martial artist there was and there and is uh, except Bruce Lee yeah uh, at that time he was associated with Black Belt magazine so he would not come to Inside Kung Fu oh my gosh so and yeah, yeah that would be the guy that would be the guy okay how about female who would you like to work with hmm martial artists oh it doesn't just... have to be no it doesn't have to be this, this is sending the purchase order out to the universe. Hmm. I really haven't thought about that. Charlize Theron. She was actually in my acting class. Well, okay, tell us a little bit about that. Before she hit, you know, the... The big time. <laughs> what is it? Something, Two Days in the Valley? Something. That was her big, her first break. Break. That she just left. Uh -huh. Never came back to acting class after that. But, uh, I mean, I had a good buddy... We were in the same class together, and Charlize was doing a scene. I can't remember what the scene was, but she had this little skimpy negligee. <laughs> and we both looked at each other, let's move to the front row. <laughs> so we got up to the front row. She was just, we're just like, oh my God. Oh my goodness, how long? And she's the nicest, sweetest person too. What was this, maybe five years ago, ten years ago? Mm, long time ago. <laughs> no. Long time ago. Oh, shoot. Well, I have to tell you that you've been very influential in my life and in my martial arts. You know, we, we look to 
for lack of a better word, the idols, the people that are on the magazine covers, the people that are doing things. Uh, I have your book, uh, The Art of Stretching and Kicking. I yeah, have your, that one. I have your video. That was, that was, that was the test, the guinea pig for, for the publication part of the, the, of the mm -hmm. magazine. And my friend Curtis just said, hey, we should do books. I said, yeah, yeah, we should definitely get books. Okay, let's start, we'll shoot one tomorrow. And then I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so talking about, oh, let's do this, do this. It, it was uh, not as thought out as I, as I would have liked it to be, but it's so fantastic. So that started the company going with the books. Okay. Same thing with the video. Okay, well, let's let's do instructional videos. I said, okay, yeah, let's shoot tomorrow. I said, oh, God. those weren't <laughs> cheap back in the day either. Yeah, you know, you, you really had to, you had to want it bad. And I bought yours, and I bought mm. Carrie Wong's. Oh, huh. so, well, I I really appreciate you taking the time and inviting us into your home, and I understand that you're cooking dinner for us. Yeah, some kung fu food. All right. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, thank you again. Consider thank you. myself very privileged. Thank you.